Have you ever noticed how the castle pole juts up unexpectedly from the bottom of the screen without warning? Just bam! Right up the asshole without so much as a doctor's order or a little lube. Thinking that adding Jiminy Cricket's singing to transition from the opening 30 seconds of logos would somehow make me grow a conscience and not sin your ass for it. Also, the cricket says that when you wish upon a star, your dreams come true, and honestly, children, that is bullshit. And frankly, it's fucked up you had to come to this YouTube channel for that very difficult lesson. Who are you? I'm you, only older and wiser. Breaking the space-time continuum narration. Also, if Jiminy could just chat with himself, why is he not giving old JC a heads up on all the dangerous things that are about to happen? Or better yet, why isn't he telling him to turn around now and run far away from this god-awful travesty of a movie? Sticking your butt this high in the air while trying to get underneath something. We get it, Jiminy. You've been doing squats. Move on. This opening is so boring they had to catch Jiminy's jacket on fire as he makes this climb, just to give the audience something to care about until he puts it out later after having exactly zero impact on anything at all. Memory, they hold the key. This feeling how I felt when he was here with me. Opening on Tom Hanks sadly mumble singing his way through a terrible fake mustache. You know, for kids. Oh, yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. Good to see of all the things they decided to carry over into the live action remake, they didn't forget the important cricket horn dogging for inanimate objects part. What's the deal with only halfway closing this curtain to the bedroom? Either celebrate your bedroom or give in to the shame, but leaving just the bed showing seems a bit of a tease. But if you cannot sell your clock, so why do you have a shop? Signor Itzi would be cuckoo for clock sins. Good night, Geppetto. I leave a disappointed man. Movie predicting my final sin seven minutes into the film somehow makes it into the script. Being an asshole to a fish. Pinocchio. Pine. Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Huh? Sure to transition real quick from Pinocchio to Pinocchio, huh? If you're just gonna be all willy nilly with the name, just go with Woody. It's not like that's taken or anything. Ow! Hey. Jiminy survives this. Why? Because he likes you. Being an asshole to a cat. Ah, sudden flirty fish with underwater mascara. Teaching children that hunting a cat with a dancing marionette is easy when it clearly takes years of practice to get the nightmare inducing puppet crawl just right. Oh, f you movie. Stop breaking your world for cheap Easter eggs that add nothing but a sip of empty calorie member berry punch. Roger Rabbit? In what universe does Geppetto craft Jessica kissing Roger as a cuckoo clock? And is it the same universe where any child watching this would even know who they are? <laughs> And where does the crow calling noise come from? Is there a digital recording and speaker in this clock? How do you make that specific of a noise a fully mechanical process? Look, I don't know where the genitals for goldfish are. I don't intend to Google it, but I am going to say that Cleo is enjoying this bedtime belly rub much more than I am comfortable with. Leaving your unscreen window open overnight. You may think you're okay with it, but I bet it bugs you by morning. It's, it's the wishing star. Oh, I haven't seen one in so long. But the poem he is about to recite says starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. So is Geppetto saying that he hasn't seen a star in so long? This excessive amount of finger flutter flapping. What caught his attention? Was it the swelling music? Because he's all the way across the room and there is literally no other noise happening right now. Plus, crickets are notoriously deep sleepers when they recline like this. If I was to tell you, you would think I was... <laughs> Convenient broken clock dad joke. Even though the entire point of Geppetto is how much care he puts into his clocks is convenient. Get it? It talks too much. Tick tock. The clock tick talks too much. <laughs> uh, never mind, it's late. Thinking that joke would have been funny at 11 a.m. Also, this poor f***ing cat puts up with so much bullshit and doesn't have to. J just leave, Figaro. There are other options out there with less puppet torture and terrible puns. The trajectory of this wish is an interesting twist. A magic beam hits the picture frame and blasts it to the room where it reflects onto Pinocchio. But what if something else had been in the wish path? Would we have a mashup of a fish and a boy? Where is that movie? Jumping jeepers, he's alive! Says the talking cricket. No, you can talk. No, you can talk. This talks about who is talking for all the some talk. I'm the blue fairy. I'm the blue fairy. No, I'm the blue fairy. No. God, I hate the repeat game. Are, are you repeating me while watching this video right now? Stop it. No, you stop it. I'm an asshole. Ha, I got you. Well, if Geppetto wanted a real boy, why would he carve a puppet? The blue fairy sure does have a lot of questions for someone who's already granted the wish. Maybe do the questioning first, BF. People can wish for a lot of terrible things. Have you even seen Wonder Woman 1984? But to be truly real, he had to pass an ordeal. Having Cynthia Erivo and making her speak rhymes instead of sing them. To be real is up to you. You have to prove that you are brave, truthful, and unselfish. I run from spiders, lie about how often I bathe, and will not share the last bite of any dessert. Am I not real? What does that make me? What does that make any of us? What does this teach children? When a boy is brave, truthful, and unselfish, 
It makes his father proud. But what if your father says that fixing motors would make him proud, but you wanted to design IT systems? Guess just don't think about that now, kids. Work on your identity issues through counseling sessions in your adult life when you realize your world has inadvertently been designed around pleasing other people to be real and matter. Send your counseling bill to Disney. The casting, the look, the voice. I love everything about this blue fairy character. I might even take a cent off if they were in the movie more than five f***ing minutes. Hello, Pops. Oh! Oh! Wait, did his stumbling backwards set off all the clocks? Or are they just going off because it's midnight? And if they're going off because it's midnight, how does this not wake him up every night when there isn't a conveniently timed magical reveal? The movie continuously clock blocks its plot's momentum with several instances of a clamoring cacophony of corporate cuckoo cuckolding. Seriously, these Disney-themed cuckoo clocks can all go f themselves with a hanging pine cone. It's me! Pinocchio! Not saying this line in a thick Italian accent and then saving the princess from Bowser. <laughs> you almost real boy! <laughs> Look, I love Tom Hanks. You love Tom Hanks. But he's entering the gonna try some stuff portion of his career. Let's just say it's not all working. We must have music! The amount of things that Geppetto has hooked up to levers and pulleys in this room is fine, I guess, but I'm sending the amount of time it would take to daily reset the light, the music boxes, and the sex toys. And so? Pinocchio became part of Geppetto's little family. Wait, are you now the narrator too? Because omniscient narrator Jiminy was talking to you earlier and you acted all ignorant. But now you're talking us through the family bonding montage and this movie seems wholly uninterested in addressing the metaphysical implications of any of this. Using your make-a-wish child as a cleaning instrument. I just want to point out that Pinocchio is sleeping in a f***ing drawer. Even though his father is an expert woodcarver who could easily make him a proper bed, Figaro is a bed, but his almost real boy doesn't. And this movie is dumb. And this is an apple for your teacher. Assuming your kid's teacher will be an asshole. This town can be very confusing. There are many, many curving streets, so pay attention. Which makes Geppetto's decision to watch the children herder walk out of sight without making sure Pinocchio was with them all the more confusing. I have some very good goblins for you. Feeding air rats. Come down. I don't like bugs. Too much work. I prefer garbage. Thinking that eating bugs is more work than eating garbage. Also, thinking seagulls would turn down any food of any kind whatsoever. Mm, a wooden boy. Look at that, Gideon. It's amazing. Almost as amazing as two talking animals dressed in clothing walking upright like humans. What is normal in this world, anyway? What the hell? Can Pinocchio even smell things? He doesn't even have nostrils. So where's the sniffing sound even coming from? Also, if he could smell things, would he stop to smell shit? Why? It's not an apple pie baking in a window. It's literal horse shit. Let me see. Who would pay for a living pup? My question is, how come it's only the talking fox that's aware of how miraculous this is? Geppetto seemed pretty shocked, yet this sentient marionette has been out on the streets all morning with nary a second glance from anyone. Why on earth would you want to be real when you can be famous? Twitter. Why, he'll see your name in lights! Lights! Six feet high! Jesus f***ing Christ, does this goddamn fox not know any other volume level? Whoever jammed a megaphone down his throat didn't kill him as intended. They amplified him. I've got it. Chris Pine! Dragging Chris Pine's name into this shit show just because you think it's a funny pun, which it's not. Pinocchio, as a rule of thumb, when somebody calls themselves honest, they ain't. Besmirching the 16th president of the United States of America. I just realized that this hammer has an Honest John and Gideon heart on it, and I'm honestly a thousand times more interested in the romantic story between Honest Jay and Silent Bobcat here than anything actually going on in the movie. I bet you were thinking I dropped the ball. Nope. What I was actually thinking is why are Honest John and Gideon letting you continue to stand there destroying the fourth wall when they could have trapped you minutes ago? No! No. Five o'clock. Five. Nokia should have been home by now. He must have lost his way. Yeah, the real problem started at around 8 o'clock in the morning when you sent a f***ing puppet to school without considering that he is confused about things like piles of shit and the sun. It's almost like he's made of wood and not quite a real boy that could lose his way and needed a parent to take him there and back safely. Who the f*** is this massive meal for? One human, a cat, a cricket, a fish, and a puppet with no digestive system live here. Taking the goldfish with you every time you leave the house. I'm genuinely beginning to be concerned about Geppetto's relationship with Miss Cleo. She looks like she has strong legs. Does she though? Her legs don't seem all that beefy and you've never seen her do anything. Sure, she's a ballerina, but you don't even know what that is. Unless for some reason Geppetto taught you about ballerinas before the lesson on why you shouldn't stop and play with horse shit. 
in the middle of the road. Pinocchio's now singing I've Got No Strings, and I just can't help but think that I'd rather be watching the original animated movie than this unoriginal, still mostly animated movie. Are we to chapter 11 in this story yet? Because Disney needs to file for creative bankruptcy immediately. Good to see of all the things they decided to carry over into the live action remake, they didn't forget the important French can-can marionettes that flipped their skirts up for an audience of children part. This bullshit. I think we're meant to be impressed to see the behind the scenes aspect of how spinning marionettes can make sense, but instead I'm completely distracted by the mostly hidden pair of people who can't see the stage at all because their heads are slamming into curtain fabric. I've seen enough Survivor to know that starting fires is difficult, and not a single one of them on the show ever used the sliding wooden shoes over a wooden stage technique. Scooting your booty with your shod foodie when you should wait until the end to use a broom instead. Cool trick. But other than this impromptu performance for a magical wooden boy, why would you need this instant stage set up in your quarters? Can someone explain how an actual normal wooden puppet can blink and furrow their brows without a strength? Hanging the key in the room with the prisoner like your desire is to create some sort of escape room instead of, you know, an actual prison. You can trust me. Says the cloaked figure that is manipulating Pinocchio's feelings through her ballerina marionette. I'm Sabina. I'm Pinocchio. Does Pinocchio think she's just floating there? Where does naivete end and abject stupidity begin? Just to be sure, there is no funny business. That's it! That's what's missing! Humor! There hasn't been a truly funny moment in this entire movie. Thanks for the heads up, Stromboli. I've been trying to figure it out for the last dreary hour. Well, I guess this is it. This is how it ends. Sweet! Who wants donuts? Fogging up a clear glass, which then needs to be unfogged to see clearly through the glass. Of course it wasn't a real fit. I had to reach the key. So the magic knows you're hard enough to know when you're lying, but not enough to know when you're fake lying, AKA not lying. Hot dog, we did it. Yeah, hot dog. Watch that. No time to explain charcuterie, pal. I don't even want to know what this means, but if the movie is implying that a hot dog can be on a charcuterie board, I can only do one thing. Now let's get you home. Yeah. But forget seeing how these two manage to unlock the cabin and escape Stromboli's watchful eye. We see 12 sets of donkeys run by before Pinocchio gets caught up in the net of convenient plot mechanics. Yet when we see them later, there are only eight pairs. You know what they say about continuity errors. They make eight asses out of you and idiot errors. A killjoy who apparently doesn't believe in having fun. Whoa, Luke Evans is having a blast here. This scene and the following song feel like they come from a different movie that I almost want to watch. Fine. Take the sin off, but it won't make you a real movie. Has Jiminy been laying in front of that wheel the whole time just chilling? It's not like he was passed out. You end up getting smooshed by the wheel that starts rolling three full minutes after almost getting smooshed by the wheel when it first stopped. That's kind of on you. I'm pretty confident that any life lessons this movie is attempting to teach their young audience is completely lost at this point, as this is the first time anything exciting has been on the screen. So does Disney know it's lampooning itself here? And if they know the whole Magic Kingdom thing is bullshit that turns our kids into self-entitled asses, doesn't that make them even eviler? Also, who funds all of this? Six sleds of children zoom pathlessly down a candy mountain and converge into a single boat canal without any injuries and someone really should be thinking about their well-being because limbless asses aren't going to be very useful in the salt mines. <laughs> this business model seems unsustainable. Pleasure Island. Is this where Pinocchio is? Oh my goodness. This is a serious crisis. Adults know about Pleasure Island? An island that their children never return from? And no one has gone to investigate and stop the crimes? The f*** is this ridiculous place? I find it odd that this movie is inadvertently saying that all things on Pleasure Island should be destroyed by children except for the pool hall. Holy sh! what is this nightmare fuel? The kids turning into donkeys wasn't enough, you had to go and add an army of the smoke monster from Lost's cousin to the mix? What the cuss is that all about? Fantastic Mr. Foxing without mother cussing attribution. What's with all the donkeys? I guess the donkeys are more surprising than the smoke monsters? How are the donkeys more surprising than the smoke monsters? Did that come out of me? Sure did, but it also shouldn't have been the first thing you noticed. Look, if you grow donkey ears, you're going to feel the weight of them on your head and immediately hear a difference in the way you're processing sound. And don't even get me started about how it feels when you have a tail shoot out of your ass. Blocking creatures made entirely of smoke by kicking a pool table somewhere in the vicinity of a door. We're trapped! No, we're not! Positive thinking, Jiminy! Don't listen to this bullshit, children. Mindless positive thinking is some of the most dangerous thinking there is. A wooden donkey would have been worth a bleeding fortune. More than a wooden human? Bollocks. Jesus f***ing Christ, watch your goddamn mouth. This is a f***ing kids movie, you f***ing shot of a d*** hole. Father! It's me, Pinocchio! I'm home! To 
just a reminder that if Geppetto had just chilled at home, they would be reunited right now and I'd be done with this movie. The real enemy is helicopter parenting. We, the members of the new marionette family theater, have a very important proposition. So we took a shot in the dark that you'd be under a pier by the ocean and booked it here post haste. Yeah, my donkey ears are gone. And your tail. Kicking someone in the taint to prove they don't have a tail. And Pinocchio, please give my best to your father. And mine too. When, when you, you find, find him. No! They are not allowed to speak at the same time. It's not cute, it's not clever, it breaks reality, and it collapses my brain in on itself. Stop making my brain hurt! Sophia says she can't carry a heavy block of wood, but apparently she can pull a heavy block of wood fast enough to ski. And don't tell me it's about how she's holding the rope in her beak. It's not a matter of where she grips it. It's a simple matter of weight ratios. I'm sorry I didn't come home after I got kicked out of school! You got kicked out of school?! And now Pinocchio will recount the entire movie to Geppetto as a simple reminder to the audience that the writers didn't care to give Geppetto any involvement in the story other than making a wish and then wandering around the countryside. A touching story about a man dealing with loss and you basically turn him into an NPC. Well done, Disney. You did all that in one day?! I know, right? I'm sorry, Father! I apologize for all the trouble I caused! How would anyone think that any of the trouble in this movie is caused by Pinocchio's choices? He's basically a magical toddler, and everyone knows that when toddlers do anything worthy of an apology, it is their parents' fault. Off the shores of Italy, we find a monstro, a magnificent creature known for its ability to light movie scenes with internal bioluminescence, wherever objects touch the water inside its mouth, an evolutionary development that makes them sought after by cinematographers worldwide. It looks to me like everything comes in, but nothing goes out. Excess cheese consumption. Open sesame! Well, what do you know? Jiminy demands to be let in and then panics when he is let in, and while I enjoy being amazed by Joseph Gordon-Levitt's voice acting skills, I do not want to hear the cricket scream about getting his way. That cricket! Is your conscience? Seriously, it's like the movie is taking every possible opportunity to remind us how much it sidelined Geppetto from the story. There's no way this goldfish bowl should still have this much water in it. And if it does, it's half seawater by now, and Cleo should be belly up and not in the good way. Also, how many children see the goldfish survive an insane trip to the sea and think their own fish could survive in any water? Come on, Disney, you have a responsibility to show this fish die a terrible death drowning in seawater. But if Pinocchio can dash them through the water like this, why did he need to Sophia ski his way out? Also, why is Monstro so intent on catching them? There's not nearly enough caloric intake there to make a difference. Do you think I'd chase a single peanut M&M under the couch if it falls? Okay, bad example. Also, also, here's a sin for you not watching the Sea Beast yet. Go watch the Sea Beast, you slacker. Oh, for the love of Jack and Rose, there's no way that bowl full of water would be floating on the water with a cat standing on it. Magical tear brings someone back to life even though wooden boys don't have tear ducks cliche. Unexpected expectoration is actually underwhelmingly expected. I am so very proud of you. And I love you so- Scoop! Good night, Geppetto. I leave you a disappointed man. I said shut up, you little insect. Star, lad, star, right? A star I see tonight. I wish, I, I wish, I don't know, how do I say this? I wish I had a million dollars. Hot dog! 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. I'm the Blue Fairy. Who is Blue Fairy? Are you sad, lonely, looking for a friend? Blue Fairy Escort Service will find a mate for you. You have four more questions. I don't think that teacher likes me. I taught school for 20 years in the inner city, so don't even think about messing with me. Oh, that's a bad mud puddle. I wouldn't want you to step in that and get your nice shoes all ruined. I'm Sabina. I'm Pinocchio. There's no chance we can ever be together? Only if you could promise me you'll never die. You know I can't promise that. If you did that, I would make love to you right now. I promise I will never die. Yeah, hot dog! Of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, Damien! <sighs>